Good evening. An unexploded wartime bomb discovered by builders in the heart of the Midlands road and rail network just north of Birmingham was finally blown up this afternoon. The effects of the road closures over two days spread right across the heart of the region, paralyzing the traffic. People reported taking three hours to complete a journey that normally takes 20 minutes. The bomb was found next to the Aston Expressway. That main arterial route was shut yesterday and today. The nearby railway line was also closed. Well, our reporter Amy Cole has been following the story all day. She joins us now from the scene. So, Amy, what's the picture there tonight? Well, I'm pleased to say, Nick, that it's a little bit calmer. The very fact that I'm standing on the pavement is a sign that some of the roads have opened. Earlier, I was in the middle of the road, but that cordon was taken down just after five. It was a huge bomb. It could be heard from six miles when it was exploded. And it's fair to say that it's been a bit of a waiting game today. At 3.30 this afternoon, the bomb was finally detonated, captured on a Highways England camera. A moment to destroy, but the disruption it's caused has been widespread. With the Aston Expressway out of bounds, this was the M6 northbound approaching Birmingham at rush hour this morning. London Midland was forced to cancel all services from Birmingham to Lichfield because the line runs parallel to the expressway. This afternoon, army bomb disposal experts prepared to safely detonate the bomb on site because it was too dangerous to move elsewhere. We took the decision to uh, conduct a controlled explosion on site. In order to make that a safe event, we have to create a sizable sandbag igloo around the bomb so that all of the explosive force and all of the shrapnel is contained and doesn't cause any collateral damage in the immediate area. Yesterday, the police evacuated hundreds of homes and around 80 people were taken to the Alexander Stadium, including Paige Collins and her 10-month-old Anaya, says it wasn't a particularly comfortable night. I had to sleep on a mat with a sheet and she just slept in a pushchair all night because we weren't provided with no cots or anything. I can't get my granddaughter to school today. She's at, she's at a special school for special needs. She's going to miss a day now. And it's, it's critical that she's there every day. It's been all right, but I ain't slept. I need my bed. <laughs> um, it's been all right, same here. I've not had no sleep, um, but other than that, it's, nice. it's been fine. The food's been all right. They've, they've, nice. they've, they've treated us good so far. The city council said they'd worked hard to provide emergency accommodation. With the bomb now taken care of, life can return to normal after a difficult and sometimes frustrating couple of days. Amy, the bomb's obviously been there for well over 70 years. Do we know much more than that? Well, it seems that this bomb could be classed as the one that got away. Uh, reports from volunteers in Birmingham who were working during the time of the Blitz say they remember seeing a bomb falling in the searchlights over Aston. Well, my colleague uh, Joan Cummins has more on this. Just uh, a warning that her report contains flashing images. From 1940, the industrial heartlands of Birmingham was a target for the Luftwaffe. Throughout the war, Birmingham was to find itself subjected to 365 air raid alerts and dozens of air raids. They resulted in 9,000 people being injured and the deaths of more than 2,000 civilians. The Luftwaffe's aim was if they couldn't destroy the factories, they would bomb the local population and hence try to instill fear and demoralise the civilians. Thankfully, it didn't work. Douglas Jones from Aldridge was a member of the Home Guard. He always told his family that they'd searched for an unexploded bomb that fell on Aston, but it was never found. 77 years later, could it be the same German shell that was discovered in Priory Road? These bombs are huge, and it's coming down from thousands upon thousands of feet in the sky. Can you imagine the power, the force, the velocity? So if it doesn't blow up when it hits the ground, it's going to smash into the ground. Now, there's other bombs dropping and exploding. So there's rubble could be blown all over this bomb. It's not surprising to me that it's been hidden away. And it, I don't think it would be surprising if more bombs were found. Social historian Carl Chin has researched the crucial role that Birmingham played in the war effort. Much of the devastation and death toll were kept secret at the time to maintain morale and stop information reaching the Nazis. But as the decades have passed, he suggests that today may be an opportunity to remember those that put their lives on the line 
defusing the bombs, not only during the war, but also in peacetime. I think what is very important to bear in mind is not only the resilience, the determination and the bravery, not just of the people of Birmingham, but all of the people of the United Kingdom who fought against tyranny, but also the professionalism and bravery of the bomb disposal squads. Today's bird's eye view of Birmingham saw a region patiently and peacefully waiting for history to be played out. Joan Cummings, BBC Midlands Today, Birmingham. Well, leading the operation has been Chief Superintendent Chris Johnson of West Midlands Police. Tom Turrell has just spoken to him at the operation room at the Tally Ho in Edgbaston. Well, Nick, this has been a major operation in Birmingham today. Plenty of people disrupted, as you heard in Amy's report there. But it's under this roof here at the Tally Ho Control Centre, where the emergency services and the military have come under one roof to try and make this bomb safe. Now, joining me here now are two gentlemen uh, from those services. We've got Wing Commander Alex Stiliamides. He's from the Royal Air Force. If I start with you, sir, we're hearing that this bomb is one of the largest bombs uh, that has been found unexploded on British soil since the Second World War. Yes, indeed, it's one of the largest we've discovered uh, in the UK. Um, obviously, we've had a specialist team from the British Army who've been dealing with the device in a controlled detonation to make it safe with a minimum disruption to all concerned in the immediate area. But a tricky bomb to handle, I would have thought. Um, yes, um, obviously a lot of corrosion on the device. It's been a World War II um, bomb, but our, tr our Army experts are trained to deal with such uh, eventualities. Well, uh, Chief Superintendent Chris Johnson uh, stands next to you. He's from West Midlands Police. Um, plenty of people disrupted by this. There's been some disruption across the city over the last 36 hours or so, um, particularly uh, through you know, travelling home yesterday and then during the course of the day today, uh, together with people that have been evacuated from, from the scene uh, and from the sort of surrounding area where the device was found. And are people getting back into their homes, back into their cars now? Yeah, I'm really pleased to say that, you know, that I know that will have been a difficult time for people and we've done what we can to try and minimise, um, with all of the agencies actually across the city, try and minimise the impact of, um, of this to the city. Um, but actually, yeah, we are returning back to a sense of normality. The roads are reopening. Um, the A38 itself, which is probably the last main arterial road, is opening as we speak. Um, and Network Rail are just undertaking uh, some reassurance about putting the rail network back in place tomorrow. Well, Nick, this has been a major incident. It's been a headache, of course, for people here. Uh, but people at home will be just glad, really, that the roads, the rail are back open. And for those people affected at home that, and that have been evacuated, that they've been able to get back into their properties. Tom, thank you. And we'll have the very latest from Aston later in the programme. And so to the rest of the day's news, the funerals.